From here, for so many weeks now, we in Mexico have had both our minds and our hearts in Italy as we've watched the bewilderment, dread, sadness, and courage of the Italian people. And this vigilance is constant. As the second largest Catholic country in the world, Mexico always looks to Italy as part of itself. Before I read only the opening to my lecture, Beatrice asked me to speak a little on Penn, as I am the president of Penn International. Penn was established in 1921 and sees literature as playing a significant role in developing mutual understanding, dialogue, and peaceful debate. Penn has also worked to safeguard against all kinds of censorship, and its members across the globe believe in a personal responsibility to help a writer in peril, challenge repressive governments, and keep vigil outside of prisons. It is impossible to know how many writers Penn has saved or helped over these 100 years, but there is no doubt that a world without Penn would be even more fragile and less hopeful. It is a true honor to have been asked this year to give the magisterial lecture on the 20th anniversary of Santa Maddalena. My first visit was as a resident writer, and I immediately loved the place created by Beatrice and so colored by the presence of her husband, Gregor van Rossori. But what is most special is Beatrice's vision, or a kind of credo, which is, if all else fails, because of war, loss of love, solitude, love, loss of protection, there is beauty, the beauty of landscape, great writing, art, and friendship. This is part one of my lecture, Poems and Errors. Ovid said his reason for banishment for Rome was due to Carmen at error, a poem and an error. These two words have walked together for over 2,000 years and might seem not to speak to one another. For me, these two words lead as two ships toward two north stars. What was Ovid's error? He was so discreet on this that scholars and historians are not sure exactly. And what is an error? Is it a mistake that may be rectified? Is it different to an accident? Does it stand in the ideas of chance or fate? Was an error the unintended consequences of unwilled circumstances? Or, in the words of Ovid, desire and reason pulling in different directions? My interest in both poems and errors comes from Mexico, where I was raised and still live. Mexico prepared me to see error as discovery, confusion, and clarity. Both art and history reflected my everyday life. The small ex voto paintings of thanksgiving in churches, chapels, and in people's homes depicted all kinds of calamities and supernatural events. In the surreal paintings of Remedios Varo, Frida Kahlo, Francisco Toledo, and Leonora Carrington, I could see a rooster make love to a woman, the moon being fed, a marble floor turning into a person, and a woman sewing herself into being. Even on the Day of the Dead, skeletons could be pregnant. The pre-Hispanic world of beauty, terror, and contradiction was also a constant and very real presence. We knew that the steps of the pyramids we climbed had been covered with rivers of blood from hearts that were taken out, still beating, from the victims who were sacrificed to the sun god. In art and history, but also in everyday life, the Mexican order or disorder of things meant I could go to a Catholic mass in the morning and a bloody cockfight in the evening. The circus that came to our street every September always had a show of a boy with two heads. And we knew that if you touched the dust from butterfly wings, 
you could go blind. In Mexico, we knew that inanimate objects could also make mistakes and be punished. One of the 38 great bells known as La Castigada, the punished one, above Mexico City's grand metropolitan cathedral, killed a novice bell ringer when the young man made the mistake of standing under the great two-ton bell. The bell was punished. The sentence was silence. Silence forever. In my neighborhood of San Angel, I remember how during storms, the cobblestones would be covered with small, delicate hailstones, turning everything white. I'd pick up the ice balls and place them in my mouth like sweets. The neighborhood gardener, Apollinar, said that these storms ruined his gardens. He had been a bullfighter. He'd roll up his worn out trousers and show me the round, horn-shaped wounds in his legs, which were the white and gray color of oyster shells. These, he said, are the scars from all my errors. What I have described here has to do with error, but it also has to do with poetry. Poetry is the search for truth and solace before the invisible, and poetry as the expression of transformation. When I learned about Ovid and his banishment for a poem and error, and when I read his extraordinary poem, Metamorphosis, which he called his Book of Changes, I already knew that a laurel tree was really a goddess and that you could look at someone and turn to stone. I already knew that an error and a poem could make a woman change into a siren, stream, stag, rock, and constellation, and even into a staircase of stone steps. As I said, this is only the opening to the lecture, which explores the connection between poetry and error. Thank you.